Are you ready, Monarch fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Sponsored by a Step in Time Chimney. Florida football was not kind to Old Dominion last week. Coach Lane Kiffin brought his Florida Atlantic team to Norfolk and left with a win. Saturday, the Monarchs reverse course and head to South Beach, where they hope to get their first conference victory of the year against Butch Davis's Florida International, another tough conference USA opponent, aren't they all? Yes. The Old Dominion football show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder on this special early edition of the show as we get set for what should be an exciting Game 7 mm -hmm. of the World Series coming up next here on Fox. But first, mm -hmm. football coach, and you've got four games left. Mm -hmm. I know that you and your coaches are keeping your guys positive, mm -hmm. and you're finally ready to pull off that upset you've mm -hmm. been looking for. Yeah, we have a saying around our building, Bruce, which we need right now, and that's PMA all day, every day, meaning positive mental attitude. You know, you've got to approach things in a positive manner right now. And, and we had a good practice this morning. Uh, Bruce Smith, someone you and I both know really well, came out and spoke to the team this morning after practice. Did a phenomenal job. A lot of people don't know about Hall of Famer Bruce Smith, the all-time sack leader, that his first year in Buffalo, Bruce, they were 2-14. and 14. And they went through a really tough experience. And he shared that with the players and how to overcome adversity, how to prepare like a pro in terms of practice, what you do with video, and really good for our guys to hear. Do you think that sinks into college kids? I Especially do. Especially a bunch of young kids. Yeah, you know, I, I, when I first met with them in the team meeting, I, I knew they wouldn't all be familiar with him. Only about 25% of the team knew who he was, so I showed them a video which is one of the great things you can do with the former players, pull up video, and once they saw the video of him and what kind of a player he was, then they really understood Bruce Smith. And, and he spoke for about 10 minutes after practice. He stayed, talked to the players, gave some of the pass rush guys tips on how to be successful. It, it was really a good day for us and for them to hear from somebody who's been through the kind of adversity they're going through now. And his Virginia Tech teams were not that great either. Okay, the injury list continues to grow. How many players will miss this week's game? Uh, did, we've got 28 that are injured. We're still hopeful. A couple are trying to get back. Probably 12 uh, will be out for this game. And that, it's, it's disappointing. It's hurtful. But, um, you know, next, next man in has to be the mentality. All right, let's talk about Saturday's opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, it, this will also give some of your younger kids a mm -hmm. chance to play because of these injuries. Yeah, that's a great point, Bruce, when you look at the positives that come out of difficult situations when, when players get hurt is that uh, some of what I call the backup ones get more of an opportunity to play in the football game. So there'll be a lot more freshmen that, excuse me, that'll be in this game. Uh, true freshman quarterback Hayden Wolf will play in this game Saturday. I want to get a good look at him because Bruce with four games left, he could play in every game and still be redshirted. So there's a lot of guys like Hayden that we'll take a look at in this game that I believe can help us win the game. Well, obviously, the big play from last week's game against uh, Atlantic was that great mm. punt return by Daryl Brown that was called back, and it's mm. plays like that that can just turn a game around mm. in an instant. Yeah, you're right, Bruce. And it, it was, you know, a younger guy who made the mistake. And, and what I'll say on the play, the younger guy who made the mistake was playing as hard as he could, as fast as he could. Uh, he blocked in the back, which was the right call. But Daryl Brown with just a sensational return. The block in the back had nothing to do with where Daryl was. He broke four tackles, went 82 yards. But to your point, Bruce, a 7 to nothing lead. We go three and out, hit a bad punt, they score. That's a 14-point swing in a matter of a minute and 30 seconds. And those are the things right now that are really hurting us early in the football games. And you said all season that you need those exciting mm -hmm. game-breaking plays. So that proves mm -hmm. you can do it. No question. And, and in special teams, which is an area we perform so well in special teams. This is the first game we didn't punt well, but this was Daryl Brown's first explosive return. And he... He has, he has been in the past two years an all-conference punt returner. So the good news is the guys on that team, Bruce, saw that if they block properly, he can take one 80 yards. All right, let's talk about Saturday's opponent, Florida International. <coughs> they have played well at home and mm -hmm. are used to that Florida heat. Mm -hmm. I assume those are two big advantages for them. Yeah, what, the biggest opponent we have this week other than Florida International is the heat. Kickoffs at noontime. The, the temperature will be forecast at 
86 degrees with the heat index. As you know down there, it could be closer to 100. So that's something we're preparing our players for this week, the hydration, the rotations, and the fact they're 4-1 at home, Bruce. They've played good football at home. But they've struggled a bit on the run game. They mm -hmm. uh, struggled against the run last week mm -hmm. against uh, Middle Tennessee. Right. So uh, this would be a great game for you guys to get your run game going. And that's something we're, we're really focused on. We want to get that run game going, Bruce. We just haven't been healthy enough at running back and a couple key spots in the offensive line. But we'll reintroduce some of the, the quarterback run that we were doing earlier in the year. We've got to find a way to get that going, Bruce. That's the key to not only controlling the ball, but field position. Because as we talked about before last week, our defense just got put in such a bad spot with field position. We've got to do a better job in that area. You still happy with the defense? I am very much so. Last week, Bruce, 27 of Florida Atlantic's points came off drives that started on our side of the 50-yard line. That's extremely hard to play defense when it's when it's a short field that many times. Two turnovers in the game, two interceptions, Caleb Ford, DeMent, Will Burkini. We're still playing very good football there. All right, when we come back, the big man, Tony Barnett from Nelson County, now in his fifth year, is a guy that the coach depends on to get that run game going. But is he strong enough to take on Nathan Epstein in the one-minute drill? Find out next on the Old Dominion Football Show. Welcome back to the Old Dominion Football Show. We're here with Tony Barnett, senior offensive lineman. Tony, let's start off with what is your favorite band or artist? Uh, I really don't have a favorite band, but I would say my favorite artist would probably be J. Cole. What are the three movies when they come on, you can't turn them off? I'm a big Ice Cube fan, so it have to be definitely the first Friday. Uh, all About the Benjamins. The last one would probably just be next Friday. That's also a good one. We all talk about who the best athletes are of all time. Who do you think the most overrated athlete is of all time? Odell Beckham, for sure. I think just about one good catch, everyone thinks that he's the best person in the world. I mean, I get credit where it's due, but I mean, it was a nice catch, but I feel like after that catch, everybody thought he was the best athlete. I'm a diehard Redskins fan, so I mean, he came from the Giants, so I didn't like him anyway. Well, while we're at it, what's your Redskins prediction for this year? Oh, we're going 16 0 for sure. What's your favorite memory watching sports? Stefan Diaz caught that one pass against uh, the Saints, I think. That was actually wild. I couldn't believe I seen that. Finally, Tony, tell me your favorite thing about being a Monarch. My favorite thing about being a Monarch is definitely game day. Like, game day atmosphere here is just unbelievable, incredible. He's Tony Barnett, senior offensive lineman for the Monarchs. And Tony, why don't you say goodbye to the Monarch Nation? Hey, Monarch fans. Goodbye. I can't wait to see you at game day. Game day is everybody's favorite day, but Coach Tony has been there mm. for you for mm. years, and I know there's always a special place in your heart for these mm. guys that stick in there season after season. They're almost like your kids. Oh, they are. He's he's one of my favorites. He's just got such a great personality, and he's played in 42 games, and this is fourth year. He's he's in his fifth year because he right. redshirted his first year, but in the four games uh, going back to the bowl year, he's played in 42 games. He's been an outstanding player for us. And he seems to have that kind of positive attitude that you need this season. He is all about positive attitude. That's why he's going to be so successful in life beyond football. Yeah, that's important too. We're going to wrap things up, but we come back on the Old Dominion Football Show as we get ready for Game 7 of the World Series. Don't go away. Welcome back, Bruce Rader, along with Coach Bobby Wilder. These red shirt rules can get mm -hmm. a little confusing. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to your fans uh, which players mm -hmm. uh, are affected and how you make these tough decisions? Yeah, it, really one of the better rule changes, Bruce, out of the NCAA last year. And to clarify it in the simplest way, it doesn't matter if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, you can play in four games and still redshirt. It could be game one, four, eight, and 12. You could play in one, five, seven, and a bowl game and still redshirt. So, for example, Eric Kuma, who I made the decision to redshirt after the game against Florida Atlantic, that was his fourth game. Now, Eric transferred from Virginia Tech, never redshirted there. So he still had that 
redshirt year, and we've got freshmen. We were talking about Hayden Wolf earlier. He hasn't played yet. He could play in these last four games and still redshirt. All right, so let's update the quarterback plans, especially mm -hmm. for Saturday. Do you plan to start mm -hmm. Messiah DeWeaver again? Well, right now, this week, it's been Stone Smart and Hayden Wolf. Oh. Uh, Messiah got a little bit banged up in that Florida Atlanta game and, and didn't play as well as we felt he could have. So uh, Hayden Wolf's going to get a good look in this football Is game. Is he ready to start? On the road? Uh, not sure as of right now because we're doing the show on Wednesday. So right. <laughs> we still got th two more days of practice. But he's practiced well, Bruce. He's practiced well all fall. Uh, freshman reminds me a lot of uh, Taylor Heineke at this stage in terms of it's so new to him. He's so young. None of us knew what Taylor was going to be before he got on the field in a very similar situation. And we see seen what he has become. Okay, well, that's it uh, for this week. Uh, Old Dominion heading south for a noon game Saturday. It's going to be hot. It's going to be sunny. Coming up next, Game 7 of the World Series between the Nationals and the Astros. Have a good weekend, everybody.